Hey, it's Jen McCaskill. I am here talking to you today about alimony. Ooh, it's what everybody wants to know about. Most common question that I get. Am I going to receive alimony or am I going to have to pay alimony? Well, that depends. There's two parts to alimony. How much do I have to pay and how long do I have or how much will I receive? How long will I receive it? How much a person has to pay or receives depends upon the disparity in the incomes of the two spouses. If you have a small disparity, then there may be no obligation or a small obligation. If there's a really large disparity, meaning a really big difference in your incomes, then there's going to be alimony. So if you are the primary wage earner and you work outside of the home, and your spouse stays home to care for the children in the home, you're probably paying alimony, okay? Most likely. So just wrap your head around it and deal with it. So how much you pay depends upon how much you make and how much your spouse makes. If your spouse does not work, your spouse will be imputed income. The court will put an income on your spouse in order to calculate alimony as well as child support. It's called imputation of income. The court can't make your spouse go get a job, but the court can say, hey, Joe, if you went and got a job tomorrow, you could make X number of dollars a year, and then they use that number for your income or your imputed income when it comes to calculating alimony. So let's say that, you know, Jennifer makes, $100,000 a year, and my spouse, Joe, makes $50,000 a year. Then the alimony would be calculated as $100,000 minus $50,000. The difference is $50,000, and then we're going to multiply that by 25%. Now, the, in, the differential, you take the larger income minus the smaller income, and then the alimony ballpark range is going to be somewhere between 20 and 25% of the difference, depending upon the income levels. The higher the income level, the lower the percentage. Now, there is nothing that says this in any of the case law. This is what the divorce lawyers use. There are the, if you go to court over alimony, the court is gonna consider a number of factors as dictated by the statute on, to consider on how to calculate alimony. A lot of divorce lawyers will say it's inappropriate to use a rule of thumb percentage. I'm not one of those. It actually just gives you a starting point to be adjusted upwards or downwards depending upon the facts and circumstances of your case. Um, if I was making $700,000 a year and my spouse was making $100,000 a year with a $600,000 disparity, that would put me at the lower percentage. So if the difference was 600,000, then that would be closer to 20% or maybe even lower. It really depends. It depends on the current tax law and the net after tax money that you have. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. We also look at the expenses. We look at the children. We look at the age of the children. We look at the employability of the other spouse and if they're going to be able to pay their bills with their children. I mean, it's not black and white, cut and dry. This is simply how I do it just to give you some basic information. Um, so how much, again, depends on the, upon the disparity in your incomes. What's the difference in your incomes? If it's a big difference, you're going to pay a lot of alimony. Okay. Then we go to how long are you are going to have to pay? How long you have to pay alimony is directly proportionate to how long you've been married. So if you've been married for five years and you've got a large disparity in income or large enough to warrant alimony obligation, you're looking at probably two and a half years of alimony. But let's say that you've got a one month old and you're getting divorced and, and, and your spouse can't make enough money just to even cover daycare, you may end up paying more than two and a half years. You may end up paying less than two and a half years. Under the law, if you're married less than 20 years, that means that you will not pay alimony for longer than the amount of time that you were married. So the maximum amount that somebody could receive alimony if you're married for under 20 years is the entire length of the marriage. 
I will say, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not getting the entire length of the marriage. I get people all the time who are like, well, I've been married for nine years. Jen, I want nine years of alimony. And there's no, there's no really good reason for it. You're not going to get it. Um, so if you're married for under 20 years, it's called a term. A term alimony is for a certain amount of time. If you're married for 10 years, maybe you pay for five. The longer you're married, you're going to go anywhere between 50 and 70% of the length of the marriage. Again, that's not written in the law. This is the, this is the rule of thumb that I use. Um, if you're married for 20 years or more, then you get what's called open durational alimony. That means that the person who pays alimony has to pay alimony until they retire. And you can't be like, oh yeah, um, I'm retiring at 57 because I don't want to pay alimony anymore. The law doesn't work that way. Basically, under the law, you're going to be on the hook for alimony until you hit full Social Security retirement age, which is either 66 and a half or 67. So if you're married, if you get married at 20 and you get divorced at 45 and you've been married for 25 years, you're paying alimony until you hit age 67. So you're going to pay for another 22 years. So yeah, it sucks. Here's the thing that you really need to look out for. When we talk about how long you're married, that means how long between the date of marriage and the date that somebody actually files for divorce. So if you separate and you've been married for 18 years and you separate and you've been living separately for two years and then your spouse goes to file for divorce after the 20 year anniversary, you're screwed. You are on the hook for open durational alimony. So you have to be very careful when you separate, you need to consult with an attorney to see if it benefits you or not or hurts or helps for you to file for divorce or not. So again, this is very basic information. It does go up or down depending upon the certain circumstances of your case, but this is just for your basic knowledge. And if you have any questions, as always, give me a call.